We are the learners and makers. We're just leaving Wyoming where we camped in our pop-up trailer. We discovered surprising desert landscapes and abundant wildlife. After driving into Colorado, we are finally seeing Jody's family and exploring Rocky Mountain National Park. There, we drove over mountains, kayaked Colorado's largest lake, and discovered we really are Team Sunset. The reason behind this whole trip, the thing that started it off, was that we were going to get to see my family after more than a year and a half, or about a year and a half, yeah. of being away, which is more than what we're used to. And um, we were definitely missing them a lot and wanted, just so excited about the opportunity of seeing them. And so we decided to meet up in Estes Park and explore Rocky Mountain National Park together. It, it was so beautiful when you finally got to see them. Oh my gosh, it was just instant tears all around. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At least I know oh. for me. I don't know I feel like it was everybody was you. feeling very emotional, yeah. but I felt just so grateful to be able to see them again. You know, you just, I'm always grateful for being able to see my family, but it was It's an all extra. the more special after all of this. Difficult, difficult time. Yeah. Hi, chipmunks. Hi, chipmunk. Hi, one chipmunk and one child. Squeak. That's all that touchy feely family stuff. <laughs> Quit going to Rocky Mountain National Park. <laughs> the biggest, coolest mountains in the country. All sorts of scenery, maybe wildlife, cool drives. Yeah. And, and national parks are something that are a big priority for us. The National Park Service has different passes for different people. And for people who have some sort of permanent disability, like Jody, they have a thing called the Access Pass. The Access Pass gets us like discounts, it gets us free entry into different things, it makes it so much more doable for us to visit a lot of our public lands, and we're really grateful that it's an option. Yeah. If we weren't using our access pass, um, Connor is entering fourth grade this year, and we had kind of planned on um, doing this this year anyway because fourth graders get a pass that's very similar to the access pass. You get into the parks for free, and that fourth grade year, I think it's there because it's just a, such a perfect time in a kid's development to really enjoy these public beautiful lands. I mean, they're just so much more capable of doing more and, but just have that sense of wonder. I mean, it's, I'm really excited about doing more of the parks this year. Um, so fourth graders, if you have, a kid that's in fourth grade or you've got it coming up just tuck that away it's such an excellent program for families 
Nice and loud, like Junior Rangers. Are you ready? All right. As a Junior Ranger, as a Junior Ranger, I promise, I promise to help protect, to help protect Rocky Mountain National Park. Rocky Mountain National Park. Good. I will protect the wildlife. I will protect the wildlife by never feeding the animals. By never feeding the animals. And when they're really cute. And when they're really cute. I will protect the plants. I will protect the plants by never picking them. By never picking them. Even when they're really pretty. Even when they're really pretty. I will keep nature beautiful. I will keep nature beautiful. By putting trash in the trash. By putting trash in the trash. And recycling in the recycling. And recycling in the recycling. And I will enjoy nature safely. And I will enjoy nature safely. And be a good example to others. All right, congratulations. Something that we've come to really enjoy with visiting national parks, national monuments, and whatnot are their junior ranger programs. I so wish <laughs> this is one of those things I'd gotten to do as a kid, you know? The activities that they have are pretty fun. It's a really engaging way to get your kids into whatever it is you are checking out. That could be something in some sort of visitor center. It can be features of an area of the park. At Rocky Mountain, the area we were at, like they handed out these little instrument kits so the kids could take like little scientific measurements and samples of different things. And we would talk about, you know, what they were observing and whatnot. What do you observe? What about like right here? Would that be a good spot? Yeah. What does it say? And that's very good the way you're reading the thermometer is very accurate. Is it just behind the flower? Just behind the flower? Hello. This time it's 69 instead of 66. Huh. Maybe this was a little more in the sun over here. Than that. And it just really got them into the spirit of being at the park, like really paying attention to what's around them, really being present with this place. And it, it's a really fun way to engage the family in this amazing place. I think we've now gotten in the habit of like we go and we check out the junior ranger program first it's like top thing first thing we do when we go to a park because it really sets a tone yeah, yeah. we you're, we learn about what is unique in that particular place but we learn a lot too oh and gosh, it yeah. informs a lot of like where we're going to go and what we're going to do and the rangers at Rocky Mountain were particularly great <laughs> when we did the Junior Ranger program because they were like, this is a really awesome place if you've got kids who want to scrabble on rocks, yeah. you know, who want to do that climbing and do that kind of going around that way. And it's not very long. And it's, this is the, what, you know, they have, they have in mind kind of what will work well for families instead of. I mean, I could figure that out. We could figure that out, but it would take a lot more time and research. We just learned so much. So we've kind of gone into these parks with really just a few things in mind. Yeah. And then go, okay, well, this is this is what we want to this is what we want to go do when, after we've gone and done the junior ranger kind of getting to know things. Well, and then just chatting with the rangers too. They can be so great for pointing out something we didn't know about or maybe suggesting like a little tweak, like, oh, maybe instead of doing this, then that, do that, then this, here's why. And it's added so much to everything we've done. They are such wonderful people that we've encountered. And <laughs> Anytime you've got someone who's willing to stand there and sing songs about poop with your kids and it's part of their job, 
That is taxpayer dollars well spent. <laughs> before that we took two inflatable kayaks with us on this trip and um, so kayaking in this region was on the top of our list. We decided to drive over the Trail Ridge Road and head into Grand Lake to do a day of kayaking. This is a really fun combo like Estes Park is on the eastern edge of the park we were heading to essentially like off the southwestern corner. So you get to drive, I think, basically through some of the highest areas in the park that are actually publicly accessible. And I think we topped out somewhere around 12, 13,000 feet. The views, as you can imagine, are just amazing. And it's yeah. so easy to engage the kids on keeping an eye out for different wildlife or you know, looking at where the trees stop and then where the plants stop. And it's just nothing but rock. And coming down into Grand Lake, this is Colorado's biggest natural lake, and it is so fun to paddle on. Oh, stunning. Oh. The mountain views and just the, I mean, we always, we love the peacefulness of the water. Just, it, it there's something about being on the water that creates such a calm well, and then we got to kayak with people, too, because Jody's family also, they all rented kayaks, so we all got to go out together, and all of us could be on the water sharing this and chatting and just checking stuff out, and it made it all the more special to know that the kids were watching their Nana and Papa paddle along, and you know, trying aunt and uncle swimming. trying to do thing <laughs> out there, and everybody's just splashing and chatting and checking stuff out. Although Connor likes to be the head of the pack. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know that 
the mythology of travel is you're like up at the crack of dawn or you got up at like three in the morning to go see the special thing. That's cool. No. <laughs> we are evening people <laughs> and something that we really brought home on our Rocky Mountain experience was, you know what? Sunset is a really beautiful time to go see cool stuff. Because one, it's actually the park is usually a lot emptier. A lot of people have left for the day. So you're hitting it at an off-peak time, even in the summer. The light is beautiful. It's still really lovely out. And hey, we saw an elk. So there you go. <laughs> Critters are abounding. Yeah, I think, you know, we kind of aspired to maybe be earlier morning people on this trip. We thought maybe we could manage that. And we affirmed that we can't. In this case, like, we were enjoying family to late in the evening and everything to really be able to, like, get up efficiently early. And everybody's kind of on vacation. We just want to have a relaxed morning. Yeah. So, you know, you we let go a little bit of the idea of, yeah. like, needing to be in this place with nobody there. Nature does not only have to be enjoyed at sunrise, is what it comes down to. Well, I mean, it's yeah. not even that. It's that nature doesn't have to be enjoyed in solitude. Well, that too. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, with the exception of if somebody's being extremely disrespectful of, you know, the place and the space and, and the quiet sereneness of it yeah that takes away from the experience and sometimes that happens but you know it's okay it is okay to be out there and have other people around you it's not like a total it doesn't have to be an all or nothing no and i think that that's like a we affirm that we're sunset people yes but B, we let go of this, like, that mythology of, like, we need to be the, the only solitude. ones there and get the picture of the lake with nobody else possibly in the distance and or nobody else passing on the trail. And it's just not, I don't, I don't think it's really healthy to hold on to only yeah. that as, as yeah. like, necessary they're, to enjoy a place well and they're they're public lands but public is a rather key component yeah, <laughs> yeah. anyway <laughs> we decided on the last day we were gonna go we're gonna go after you know in kind of the after hours mm -hmm. part down into the more popular part of the park which is bear lake area and walk around some of the lakes that are down there there's a bunch of smaller hikes bunch of little lakes and we can enjoy several of them at sunset mm -hmm. and it was beautiful sprague lake in particular is so worthwhile very family friendly not a very long loop around this gorgeous little lake brilliant mountain views and forests it was such a nice way to cap off the evening and do something really special together as a family and get amazing light in the park. You could see just these beautiful sun rays and you know the glint, the light on the mountains and all that. It was a really special time. Thank you so much for sharing our visit to Rocky Mountain National Park. 
You can follow more of our everyday adventures on Instagram at Learners and Makers, and for more in depth discussion of everywhere we go, check out our website and family travel blog at learnersandmakers.com. On YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ding that bell so you get word as soon as we drop a new video. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. You did this on your own? <laughs> You're so badass. Let me try that again.